Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and today we're in here at the welding table. We have a inch and three quarter by 15 foot long shaft, and it has a, a wear, wear area where the packing is, strut bearing there, and there's an intermediate bearing here where there was some wear. And I'm going ahead and fill in with the fusion overlay process, which I add base material back in, completely fuse it in solid. It's not a flame spray uh, application. And we're gonna be using uh, 309L 16 rod. I, uh, I use a use uh, Excalibur by Lincoln, but I was given some uh, Sandvik uh, rod comparable, same uh, classification. And we're gonna be uh, trying some of that out. Now, I'm not gonna follow along with some weld shots and everything else. What I wanna show you is that I got three areas that we're gonna completely weld build, and then we're gonna turn those diameters down to match perfectly with the other diameters. That means we have to get this shaft back straight. And that's what this video is gonna be about, is how I make this straight after I do the welding. All right, so I've preheated this, so I gotta get rolling here, and I'm gonna start adding some rod here. The most important thing about the preheat is to go ahead and create heat on the shaft so that when you're welding opposite sides, and I'll, I'll put a bead on this side, then 180, put a bead on that side, just like you've seen in my prior videos, that keeps it uniform. But it still does, in the end, have some kind of run out, and that's what we're gonna be straightening out after we do the welding. All right, so I gotta switch my helmet and stuff, so. Well, I thank you, Jim. Uh, Jim Bollinger uh, turned me onto these gloves here. I've been fancying them. They're real comfortable, real nice. All right, uh, I've got a soapstone line here, and I'm gonna go ahead, and I like welding off of the side here so that I get to set the shelf. The shelf is where you're gonna set the next bead when you come back to it, all right? So, All right, now I just go 180. And we have the next shelf right here. Okay, it looks like we're going to get two beads per rod. Your second bead where you actually start getting the depth of your uh, your build up around. Now this one here kind of looked like it went downhill.
just looking over uh, any low areas that might might think that might be low. It's better to hit them right now while you're hot. Better to be looking at it than looking for it. If there's a few low areas when we get to turning it, we can come back and touch that up with the uh, TIG torch. Have much of my stainless steel wire wheel left. This lets me look in uh, close to the edge here, see if I got any undercuts. I do see a couple little areas there I want to touch up there. Okay, we're ready to move on to our other two spots there. I uh, finally got around to putting some anti-splatter um, film on, on the plunger that comes in on the back of the truck. Chuck, uh, this plate here. It was a spring-loaded plunger, and that uh, lets the ground go through the rotation of it and doesn't arc through the motor and everything. Transfers the current into here, and it used to squeal or squeak. So this is kind of a test here on this uh, on this wall here, uh, just to see if it's squeaking or not. Just looking in the uh, distance off the end of the shaft there, it looks like it's still running. It's running pretty true. Might be off about, oh, a hundred thousand down there at the very end, which is not bad for that one weld there. I don't really have an indicator here to actually show this uh, area here, um, but I mean it is running and chucking. The set in the uh, the roller is about a foot the other side of the weld that we just welded, so and that's why that very very end down there is showing a little bit. And I'm just guessing. Uh, because of the run out on the end. All right, we got to preheat this area now. Okay, we put our foot pedal down here on the ground and we slowed down our speed because I'm going to go ahead and we have two little valleys in here that have been really rubbed hard and I don't want to turn down the whole diameter to those valleys. But I'm going to go ahead and make a cylindrical pass to fill in that valleys and then we'll be able to go back to laying our lineal beads which I I prefer to lay the lineal beads and I think the finish and the build up is easier to blend and I have more control over keeping the shaft straight And a letter there. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Okay, that was just getting some mail. Okay, here we go.
Okay, now this other one here is a little shallower, so I sped up the feed a little bit so I can lay it in a little shallower. Let's see what we do. Okay. Okay, it's raised up a little bit, but when I make my lineal beads there, I'll know that we're not going to be shy of any material. We're not going to be dipping into uh, a groove there, which I don't mind if it's a little fat in the center. In fact, uh, sometimes you actually sag a little bit in the center because you got such a long stretch. Sometimes you're going, you're, you're racing across there a little bit, and you tend to get skinny on your bead in the middle. At least it does on me. All right, now we can speed it back up so we can go from side to side pretty quick. All right, and we're going to go ahead and take the soapstone and measure or uh, mark our split lines. Okay, there's one of our split lines right there. Okay, and here's our other one. Whew. Smoking glove. Okay. And we get comfortable. Here we go. It's one eighth rod, and we're going about a hundred and ten amps or so.
Well, that's looking good. <laughs> a little bit better than my first one, but the um, you know it's just like riding a bicycle. You know you gotta be you gotta pedal a few rounds there before you get back into stride. So looking really good. This one uh, may not even have any undercut there. It's looking pretty, pretty good. Excellent. Okay, we're gonna let this cool down without misting it or anything else. Just take a look at the uh, the end down there. Right now, it's looking pretty good. Less than an eighth of an inch of total run out down there. Um, we'll be curious to see what it's like on the rollers, and we'll show you that before we start skimming these down. All right, uh, good morning. We're out here, and uh, we, we're, we got our torches set up here. We got our cool mister up here. I get asked a lot of times, uh, this does have a mixing uh, knob on it, and this is nothing more than a siphon uh, attachment. I did make the broad snout on this, and uh, uh, other than that, it's just something that I put together back in the 80s. Uh, brought this from California when I first came out here. I've had it my entire shafting, sh straightening, education work, and throughout my career. Um, we have brought out my big torch here, because I do want to go ahead and move this around pretty swiftly the the bends I handle in different categories and what I'm taking here between that roller and this roller here which is almost pretty well equivalent to this distance here to here to here pretty pretty equal this might be just a little bit longer in here I'm reading 80 thousands on this side here, and I'm reading about 85 thousand. All reality, I, instead of doing a heat spot on each side of here, I could go ahead and rotate this around and then put a wall bead on the side that I want to draw tighter and, uh, and uh, you know, get my contraction that way and create the straightening. But we're not, we're not off that far, okay? I can draw 40 thousands out of this uh, in a short period of time, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to draw that out as close as I can get it here. We'll check a couple spots here. Um, I, might, I might go ahead and get a sawhorse, something here, so I can get an indicator out here so I can uh, see that as well or confirm that that is going to be straight. After I have that, then we'll move off to this end here. Okay. Um, got my striker. I turned on my gas already, but we've got to bleed this out a little bit. Not bad. Now, it's uh, it's it's 45 degrees here this morning. Um, I've been out here straightening, and sometimes I actually <laughs> have to take the torch and heat up my nozzle because this thing will spit ice pellets when you get down to freezing. Um, uh, so, I, I have been out here where <laughs> icicles are hanging from this and everything else. Okay, it's not ideal. Um, but uh, when you have to straighten something, you have to you have you have to put it there. That's all. Um. I'll see if I can bring you in a little closer for this, okay? All right, that a little better. All right, we'll bring it around here. There's zero, and there's about 83, 84, somewhere around in there. I was pretty close to about 85. All right.
Okay, we're down to 60. All right, we took 10 aside off of there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit over here. I'm gonna work both sides. I get asked a lot of times, hey, aren't you afraid of burning up your indicator? Okay, this this federal indicator, it actually has a cap on the end of it here, so it's it's protected up in the, there. Um, it It is a very forgiving indicator. I have probably had this one here probably nine, ten years. Um, and I have no problem, uh, uh, it, and it's still still pretty clear for most of it on the face and still has no problem uh, giving me an indication that I need okay we're down to uh, 45 right now all right so we're gonna come back over uh, here I'm gonna I want to bring my heat in here a little bit I'm just gonna move my indicator over here a little bit I'm reading 40 instead of about 43 or 44 because we know that this is the peak of the bend but I want to go ahead and I want to bring my heat close to the, the weld itself A lot of people ask me how come I tap it right afterwards and you can see that I tap it almost every time when I get done. That little tap is all the tap that you need to send harmonics through the shaft to go ahead and suck the last little bit of motion out of this thing or let it relax into a stress-free point. It, that's all the tap you need. So it doesn't have to bounce on a tailgate of a truck or anything else like that. That little tap right there um, does what it tends to normalize it. All right, I'm down to, uh, that's about 12 there. I'm down to 17 thousands right there. And we got about 20 right there. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to this side now. And, and the high and lows are on the same side.
got a little chewy chewy spot right there that I can I can feel on my roller there all right we got a total run out of nine thousands right there oh, sorry about the smokes I got the wood stove going there today oh and what do we have on this side here we have about eight thousands right there all right I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do another spot on that side Right there. Still got about two. I can still put a little, little warmth right there. Okay, it's within a couple thousands right there and right there. We're going to let this sit for a little bit and completely normalize to the outside temperature and then we're going to recheck it. And we do that on any final straightening. It's all got to be ambient temperature. It's got to be equal to the surface inside the core, everything on the shaft. And uh, then, you, then you can judge it to be straight and true. And... Boy, that looks nice and true out there, but that's just by eye from here. Okay, we came back out here and we had like about an eight or nine in here, but we, we took our indicator and we walked our way on down here. We had like five and we came in and we found that we actually had like nine or ten. So we uh, we brought our indicator over here and we sucked, we sucked this down here to get us down where it's reading about a couple thousands there now but it helped bring this down to that same couple thousands and this side here is running nearly perfect all right so somewhere between there and here now i'm reading the high so we're, we're this is this is running pretty true from side to side but the bar itself actually has another bend in here that not related to our welding is what i'm trying to get to so, <clears throat> between here and here, I'm going to look for that highest spot. That looks like about four there. And about five there. And about five there. I'm going to suck right out of here again. Okay, I pulled a little bit much on that one. I actually pulled it 12 pass.
we're off four and in between uh, the high and the high and low where we pulled that <coughs> Okay, we're reading zero there. <coughs> about one. About one. We're reading about three right there. Reading about two there, about one. Let's go ahead and we're gonna take this out of here. Just a little bit off of this mark here. Reading about one. About one. Within one. One and a half. Within one. All right. We're happy with this. We're going to get something so we can read that out down at that end. Get a get something that we can put an indicator on okay we bought a 55 gallon drum over here and we adjusted our indicator and I don't have it set at zero let me set it at zero for those of you that have to have it on zero all right we're reading about 30 32 thousands okay between these rollers it's running true okay so somewhere in here is the bend I'm going to move the barrel over here a little bit and I'm going to pick this middle spot right here and we'll see if um, if this is about 15 or so then we kind of know that the bend is in we want to find out where that initial bend is at in here if it runs true 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 and then all of a sudden then we start seeing it going then we know the bend is here and that's how we're going to we're mapping it out to find out what it's going to take to get this to running true with the rest of that shaft and then we'll know that from here all the way to that roller over there is running acceptable tolerances in my shop okay I just slid the drum down here and I brought the indicator down I'm getting two thousands right there I'm getting eight thousands right there and I'm getting eighteen thousands right there I'm gonna bring the indicator back here and I'm gonna adjust in this area I'm gonna adjust this eight out and then we'll move the indicator down here and we'll this if it's out we'll be making the adjustment at where we're running true here and each each time you make a surface running true that you work your way on off the end of there that'll carry a true shaft off the end
Okay, I'm running 1,000s right there. Okay, so on that 8, that circumference where that 8 is, is going to be where I'm going to make... Well, I'm going to make my adjustment for the next position out here. Okay, we had 18 here. Now we want to see what's left. We have four. That shows you that by correcting what was in here, because that was a progressive bend, in somewhat the same line or same alignment of the axis there. Okay, we're going to call it five. Here, that's what we want to we want to create our heat mark here. Pretty close to nominal or normal temperature there. I'm going to leave that right there. I'm going to let that sit for a minute before I'm convinced that I'm 100% on there. And I'm reading about three there, but let's double check. We want to make sure that. It's looking like about two thousands now, so I'm gonna let that sit a little bit and then we'll go ahead and we'll jump in there. And this is where it gets critical. When you start overhanging here, you gotta really make sure that each one of these heat spots set until it comes to uh, uh, normal temperature. 2000, that means I'm only out one thousandths. Okay, we come back to it and we check it. We're running about one thousands right there. And we're going to sneak this in down here at the bottom here. See if we can. And we're within 1,000s right there. Okay, let's head on down to the other end of this shaft. Okay, well, we kept this roller exactly where it was. We slid the shaft down to where the other rollers still riding in here. We're verifying that we're running true in between our center still and we've moved up and down in here so we have less than one there. Now we want to go ahead and we start we start between our roller here which we know is zero and the first side of the weld and we got five thousands there. Um, let me go ahead and I, I got my marker here. Let's map, we'll, we'll map this so we know what we got. Okay, there's five high right there. We're just writing the number on the high. Okay, there's three. Three and five are pretty well in line. So it actually goes it actually goes up and then down within this weld right here. And that's another thing. You, both sides of the weld have got to run true because when you come in and blend that blend that diameter into these two diameters and polish this thing out, you don't they they all have to be running true all right um then we'll come out here to this uh edge of the weld and we have 12. 
that's actually pretty good for having a lineal run bead right there all right um we're coming to this side now and we got 30 thousands right there and then our last diameter here before we get to the taper about 48 thousands right there all of these are in line uh, these three are in line about one quarter turn off of this right here all right we start right here okay we're actually reading about three right there which we thought we were reading five but I'm back here just a little about an inch from the uh, the weld Okay, I'm within one there. Now I'm within five there. Brought it down about three. Okay, less than one. We're gonna let it sit there for a minute. Wanna make sure that that settles out. I like that. Uh, I had to stop for lunch there. Uh, Eric made me uh, spicy tuna hand rolls. He has some really nice fatty toro. Whew, it was yummy. 
Um, okay, so we came back out here, and it looks like we're still running one. So we're working our way on out here. We're going to take our next measurement right in right here. And that was 12, and it's come down to 7. About 7 right there. Okay. Okay, we're less than one. That's normal already, it's, I can feel. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go out to here. This was running 30 out here. See what we're running now. Looks like about 12 now. Yep, 12 and a half. 12 and a half, here we go. Oops. Gotta have a sharp, crisp flame there. Need to bring the heat on fast. Okay, we brought it down to eight. Got to take another four out of it. Three and a half, four. Okay, we're like at two and a half. Two. Two. All right, and it's slightly off to the side here, so here we go.
Okay, that last uh, spot there, we brought it down within one thousandth. And let's bring out here, check this. And we're running within one and a half to two right there. <clears throat> Time for a little oil on this, uh, on this steric clamp there. It's only, it's only 30 years old in the water. <laughs> okay, we got a little run out on the, on the taper there itself. We're just going to, we're going to go all the way around just make sure because sometimes sometimes your shaft could drift and you can you can get the sense that you actually have a bend but yet it's not it it, it is slightly bent on the taper itself all right so i'm going to go ahead and set it here We got five to that side of the keyway, and we got about eight to that side of the keyway. All right. Sometimes, sometimes when people don't straighten shafts beforehand, they actually will hold it in the lathe, machine the taper, and then when they let it go, the taper's not running true with the axis of the shaft, and that happens a lot. I don't really see the, if it's spinning in a lathe, and I can see the finished machining mark, I can tell whether that was done or not, because you'll see that wobble back and forth. Um, if it's a true running shaft and a true running taper, you'll see that line stay exactly steady or very lightly by, uh, vary, that's all. Okay, we're almost out of water. <laughs> All right, um, here we go. Uh, five and five. All right, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put it right dead line with the keyway. Here we go. Okay, the taper now is running within one, one and a half right there. All right, I'm ready to stick this back in the lathe. Okay, we got our first weld set up here. We went ahead and we came over here and we dialed this within one thousandth. Okay, less than one thousandth, and then we came over here to double check this, and we're less than a half a thousandth, and that's because we straightened this out, and this center isn't all messed up yet. The center is running true with the uh, the the taper and the shaft and everything else. All right, so we're going to be able to turn and skim our first weld right here between the center and the chuck, which is going to be nice and stout. 
Then we're going to slide this out and we may start running the steady rest on this side here so that we're going to be holding the distance in here to hold down on the chatter or the harmonics of the cut itself. All right, let's pop this off of here. We'll get our cutter set up. Yeah, the rooster's out there today. All right. There we go. Now, before before I actually start cutting, I want to go ahead and and uh, I'm going to take a file and I'm going to just kind of take some of the. I have a little bit of splatter here, and I have some uh, chewy chewy marks on from whatever's happened to the shaft in its life there, and we'll just kind of. some paper and go around it all right anything on this side here little one there all right These are lines from the wear of the cutlass bearing in this area right here. It's just that the cutlass bearing diameter was good here, at least within a couple thousandths, and then we had a dip in here, and I just wanted to make sure that that bearing has a full surface in here. Uh, while we're going ahead and fixing an area, we fixed the whole area that we noticed is, on, is low. So better to be over welding than, than under welding. All right. <clears throat> All right, we're touching there. Let's take fifty thousands. Usually I'm a little bit heavier at my start of my wall than the end of my wall because I come down and I set the puddle and then I come across. So whenever you're setting, setting the puddle and then when you come across, I come up and then reset the puddle that back down. That way we keep, keep the build up even all the way across. Okay, that was, um, this is one pass of, of walled around. Let me find my scale here. Okay. Now, I touched and I took 50 thousands off of that, okay? Right now, I have an eighth of an inch per side from that surface there. Now, of course, some of this wall is not being skimmed right now, so it's a little bit less than that. But all these high spots, they're still an eighth of an inch from those spots right there. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take another 
fifty thousands. Okay, that's looking like a oh, 40 to 40 to 50 percent clean up right there right now. I don't really see any areas that are drastically undersized that I can't see them cleaning up in another 75 thousands. Okay, now we're going to start breaking it down a little bit less. I'm going to take a 25 thousandths cut. Okay, and now I'd probably say that we've got a good strong 90% cleanup right there. All right, I'm going to get my uh, micrometers here. Inch and three quarters are shaft size, and our buildup right now is uh, uh, one inch 845, give or take a couple tenths there. We're going to go ahead and take another 25 here. You see we're pulling a full chip now. Okay, seven ninety five. 
794. We got about a thousandth taper in this. That's in my laid bed anyway. Um, all right, let's uh, roll it on over just to. Okay, I have no holidays in in this at all. At this point, everywhere where it's cutting, I got one little one little spot right there, but that'll that'll definitely clean up before this is this is down there. This is a good clean buildup, and in the yards we did do a lot of flame spraying. We used to do ceramic flame spray on on bearing and packing areas on patrol boats for the Navy. And uh, that was the only flame spray that we actually did. Some of the plug valves and some of the other things that we actually experienced or were called out to flame spray and then remachine uh, failed hydro tests because it's a porous material and it would leak. And uh, so not all flame spray is ideal for all situations. Um, and we also did the well fusion overlay process, which is actually bonding the proper materials to blend in with the original material and you, you this is 100 percent solid there is no bond here it's 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 well it's weld material joining base material with no uh problems of breaking loose at all and uh, so this is my this is my number one go-to way to remedy a worn out shaft Okay, now I'm just double checking here because uh, we're about five thousandths, about five thousandths under the nominal in front of that bearing, and we're only about one thousandths under it on this side right here. Okay, what do we got here? We got three, three over right there, and we got like five over right there. Okay, so that side just barely, and I blended it right on out. Okay, we blend this out over here, and we went ahead and put a dashboard gauge on here so that we had um, we had a zero setting at what this diameter is right here, which is this is a couple thousands over the nominal and this this diameter right here is actually about five thousandths under so what we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to blend this we don't want a sharp edge right here of the weld so we want to blend that into it so we got to take it from this diameter and then blend this into the diameter uh, with a smooth transition that's what we're looking for smooth transition Okay, so we go ahead and we fire it off, and then we come into where we're just skipping like that. And we let it pick it up a little bit there. And then as we're, as we're cutting along here, we go ahead and we just back it out slowly. About a half a thousandth every eighth of an inch of travel. Okay, 
Now, that's real, real, real close right there. All the way around. Okay, we can massage that in with some paper there. I think we might even go ahead and try to go another thousands right in that area right there. It's no different. It's no different than that than that little valley that's being worn in by the bearing right there. It's just that, that that is undersized and we just want that transition to be smooth right there. Okay, we're gonna wipe the oil off of here because we're gonna we're gonna put some paper to it. Okay, now that's repairing that diameter. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move this out and we're gonna do the same thing with the other two surfaces. Okay, we slid this down, put the center in there, we put this in the four jaw, we dialed this in to where it's running true here. Well, now we lock down our steady rest. And we're gonna come in here and we're just setting the rollers. To guide and support this build up area, the bearing diameter. All right, now we can set up our cut and come in and cut each side of this. But while, while we're here, we're going to go ahead and let's put the indicator on here because we want to read what we're, we're actually running out on each side here and see if we need to adjust anything. That's within one thousandth there. Huh, one little swell right there, but uh, that was pretty good. I'm actually running a little closer on this side than I am on this side, but I've dialed a zero here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and skim it on down. Same thing, first cut is 50 thousandths.
Okay, I, I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my other camera here. All right, I'm taking my other camera here, showing I got the lathe in here. Okay, I've got uh, my other camera uh, here. We're, we're skimming our second second diameter, second wall buildup. We've already skimmed our first wall buildup and the steady rest is right in there. We've got the center in here. Now if you look, we're carrying the load right there on that roller. There's our third walled up area right there. Look how true that shaft is running. All right, let's take a quick look around on the inside here. All right, and the shaft is just riding on a piece of Teflon here. That's why you need to straighten your shafting before you work on it. All right, I dig that. You can't get too much better than that. Um, blend, being able to restore the material and blend it into the original shaft and bring life back into the shaft for the customer. I have a few other things that I'll do down at the prop in there and I got some there's some dings and stuff like that I'll remove all of that dress that up I got to turn this thing around we'll do the other surface and we'll fit and face the coupling I hope that's a an insight at least on how I go ahead and, and create a straight shaft before I get to the machining aspect uh, the shaft you know might have only been out about five or ten thousands before I even started the welding procedure but before you can do your machining work, whether it be a repair like I'm doing here or machining the very beginning of your shaft, your material has got to run true. And there's a good example of how I go about straightening my, my material before or before a procedure like this. All right, until next time, get her done.